Hey there, welcome back to the Win A Pageant Podcast. I'm your coach, Alicia Darby. Now this episode features a client of mine who agreed to three specific things, to be coachable, to be vulnerable, and to have her coaching session recorded and published in order to help you. So I know that a lot of women who haven't had pageant coaching before don't really know what to expect or how much can you really even get done in 30 minutes. So this client of mine agreed to have her session recorded in order to show you what gets done and how it gets done during a virtual coaching session. Okay. So I want you to listen to this call from two different perspectives. First of all, I want you to think, could pageant coaching, especially virtually, even be something that could help you in your pageant prep. I want you to be thinking about that. At the end of the video, I'll tell you how you could make that a reality for you. Uh, The second thing that I really, really want you to pay attention to is I want you to think the things that I'm sharing with her, the coaching that I'm giving her, how can you apply that coaching to your own pageant prep, okay? What are the things that she's learning in this and the skills that she's developing and the strategy that she's learning? How can you apply that to yourself? I'm so grateful that this client allowed me to record this call because I know a lot of the things that she learned during this call will support you in your pageant prep. So sit back with an open mind, maybe get a notepad and a pen handy because a lot of this coaching is gonna apply to you too, all right? Enjoy. Let's go ahead and dive in, Katie. So tell me, um, I got your form that you filled out, so that is great that I have a little bit of extra information, but how can I help you today? Um, I, my platform is a little controversial. It's uh, women's sexual health. So not only am I a founder of my nonprofit organization, but I am also trying to help other women as far as getting rid of shame and embarrassment. Um, my other obstacle is getting rid of my shame. I've been working on it for a year and a half um, with other coaches. So I have some really great coaches out there. I've been following you. I have your book and it's been very helpful. I think it's just a matter of how I organize my platform with younger girls going into womanhood because I also have that going on in my nonprofit all the way up through women who are suffering from sexual dysfunction disorders. Wow. Okay. So tell me about the nonprofit and what is the goal or mission of the nonprofit? The mission is to really um, spread awareness of sexual dysfunction disorders and educate the community because not a lot of people know about the disorders that I spread awareness about. And... It's very private information that I share and other women share. So trust, building trust is very important with the women I work with. But I also want the community to be able to trust my resources. I have um, a lot of healthcare professionals I work with and I just started a support group. So this is a brand new nonprofit that I'm still building. All right, good. And I... And then I do have a few programs that are involved. So I don't know if you wanted that too. Yeah, tell me, I'm taking a bunch of notes. Tell me about the programs too. Um, The first program is Lady Talk. That's where I recruit healthcare professionals, um, OBGYN providers, physical therapists, um, um, (laughs) natural practitioners such as holistic and massage therapists, There's a few others. I'm going blank at the moment. But basically what I do is I hold a panel event where an audience can come and watch either just to observe. And then I will have a organized question list that I'm going to ask the panel because I know these are very sensitive questions. So I always like to have a list already planned so women can still get answers that they may have questions to. Um, I start off by sharing my personal story so they can see that I I am relatable and that I've been through what they're probably going through now. And then at the end, it's a QA and a session. That's the first program. Okay. Um, I do a minute. Hang on. Hang on. Before you tell me about your next one, um, have you, (laughs) have you launched that already? Have you done them before or they're just coming up soon? I've done the programs on, under another nonprofit that closed for about two years now. So oh, I've already okay. been doing the program. Oh, great. Okay. So when's the next one? When's the next lady talk? 
uh, what we'll do with the coronavirus going on around right now. I don't have a set date. Okay. So we're just did, waiting did, on. Did you have one on the calendar before the virus? The whole thing? Yeah, I had two previous ones. Okay. Um, if you're looking for a date, um, probably six months ago. Okay. Okay, cool. And But there's none coming up or there wasn't any planned yet? Not at the moment. I do plan on getting back on track once this virus, this virus is. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Once we all get back to normal. Mm-hmm. I know. It's so weird. Like, <laughs> this whole thing is throwing everybody off. Like, it is the oddest thing to be a part of right now. Like, it is just... I have no other word than just like weird. It is just so weird. Like everything is so different. Um, okay, cool. I was asking because yeah. I was wondering if that was, because there's other ways we could do it even online. Um, okay, so this is good info. All right, so let me ask you this, Katie. So you you mentioned that like it's it's super sensitive. I'm still not quite sure what it is. Can you, can you just kind of like say it like it is so I understand it? We can make it sound fancy for the pageant, but I'm still like a little like, wait, what is it we're talking about here? Like, what is it? Um, So there's a few things. The first is pelvic floor dysfunction um, that can cause a lot of digestive, um, reproductive. It can be stemmed from endometriosis. It can be stemmed from sexual or physical abuse. I mean, there's so much that I could talk about, so it's hard to really keep it short and simple. Yeah. I have personally suffered from vaginismus, um, which entails involuntary spasms that you're not aware of. So you have, you're not able to be intimate. It can either, it can either be you can be intimate and it's painful, or it's the severe that I had where you're unable to. Um, you're unable to see a OBGYN for any exams. And you can't have a baby because you are unable to be active or wow. intimate. Wow. So that this one's very... So, Katie, this is so interesting. I just had a conversation with a friend of a friend who was dating a woman. They were actually, I think they may have been married even, or they were engaged to be married. And they and they discovered that she has that and that it was and she didn't even know it. She didn't know that was a thing. She just thought this is how it is. And like, yeah, it's so that. So this is very timely for me. This is so interesting that 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 this is even a thing. OK, cool. So so your nonprofit um, is the the real mission of it. It sounds like it does a few things. It, it supports. It brings people together. It also raises awareness that this stuff even exists and it's out there. Um what is it? Is that really the the goal is to raise awareness and then support those who are experiencing it, giving them resources and stuff? Or are there other components about your nonprofit that I'm unaware of? Basically to break the stigma of shame and um, gotcha. I got a little. <laughs> so it's it's basically to break the shame that women feel because we talk about so many other topics with no shame no remorse, you know, like, like men, we talk about men all the time, but we don't talk about women and their issues. Um, younger girls, me personally was shamed about my menstrual cycle, which I shouldn't have been. It's a natural way of life. And basically my mission is to break that stigma of shame. Yeah. And to really have women love themselves and heal from their trauma, which is 90% of what I do is try to help with trauma. Yeah. Wow. So do you do this in your day-to-day work as well? Or is this just your side hustle? Or are you like a counselor? Oh, sorry. (laughs) Sorry, there's like a break up Wi-Fi. Um, It's just a side thing I do. I would love to be full time with it, but I, it's going to take a lot of work to get that to that that spot. So what do you do outside of this nonprofit? What are your, like, are you in school? Are you in like working full time, what else do you do? I work full time at Paychex Insurance Agency oh, okay. as a health and benefits representative. And then I um, do the pageantry, of course. I am a member of Toastmasters Public Speaking Club. I've been there for two years. They help me a lot with public speaking. And then I like to play the violin when I actually focus on that. <laughs> Yeah, I know. It's, so hard, much, so it's hard to do our creative stuff, right? When we're so just like 
drivers. Like you're like a driver, a type A, a creator. A, so it's hard to like step into the abstract. Like I'm just going to play the violin right now. Yeah, I totally get it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. This is great. So, okay. So what I'm thinking, you mentioned, okay, how old you said a year and a half, the nonprofit is just a year and a half old. My nonprofits, um, since, so it's a year now. Okay. Yes. Yay. Happy anniversary. Um, there's a bigger, <laughs> thanks. It's a bigger backstory because I was actually helping another nonprofit and she decided to quit doing the programs and I was helping her and she just basically handed the programs over to me. So the programs themselves about three years old. Okay, cool. So, this so is they're, great. They're still new. Yeah, this is good. Okay. So, uh, well, they they feel new in the nonprofit world, probably, but in the pageant world, you are like an OG. So, because that <laughs> because a lot of women they start their platform and then they're like, I guess I have, I guess I need to like start doing stuff, and then you know they're competing six months from now, you know, and so you actually have a lot of experience that you are going to be able to speak to and to speak from. Um, I think that I, I, just as I'm experiencing you right now, I think what could be useful for you is, um, well, let me ask it. Have you ever seen, uh, th there's this new series right now on Netflix called Goop, the Goop Lab, G-O-O-P. Have you heard of this? Have you heard of the Goop no. Lab? Okay, so Gwyneth Paltrow, who's a famous A-list celebrity, she started this company, Goop. And Goop basically, it, it, it references like the Goop that you get in your face cream or the Goop that we put on as lotion or it's like things like that. So what they are striving to do is really explore health, wellness, beauty across all areas. And they created a documentary series with a variety of things that they are exploring, one of which is women's, women's intimate area, I guess I'll say it as. So that, that, um, video is, it's relatively graphic, so I wouldn't watch it with children, but it explores that concept of how women are being shamed and it gives language to the empowerment side of things. I would recommend if okay. you can get your hands on that episode, I think it will help you even as you are communicating this, because even right now, when you were like, oh, it's a super sense, you were, you were like so sensitive that like, you know, like, oh, it's, it's uncomfortable. Like you were using language that made me even uncomfortable. Like, I'm, I'm like, I'm afraid to ask, like, what is it? You know, even though your whole goal <laughs> is to make people stop feeling so bad about it. Like, you know, if you've got a vagina, you have a vagina. Like I, I'm, I know I have one, like, it's not weird for me to talk about it, you know? So, but it is weird when we start saying, oh, but, oh, well, let's not, oh, let's kind of, oh, here we go. Like, we got to lower it down, right? So I would start with your, the way you communicated about it. Maybe you want to even consider, so I think that this episode would be helpful for you because I don't remember the details of it. And I kind of fast forward through it because it wasn't, an, I wasn't like, wow, this is like something I need to tune into. <laughs> But you will like you're going to you're going to be like, yes, so true. And yeah, but they shared statistics. They shared like what what is happening around the world. They shared there's there's like this this expert guru lady that they brought in who's been doing this for decades. She grew up in the 60s. And so her like view of of that, that was like the free love movement, you know, so her viewpoint of this type of stuff really just now it, and for men. People have been talking about men and studying and researching male sexual organs for literally decades, you know, but women, they're mm. just now beginning to start to be even curious about women's sexual organs. So anyway, I think that that yeah. will help you a lot in terms of um, talking about it and getting, because you'll see, even in that interview, they are, they're doing a Q&A, but or really not a QA, and a it's really an interview of Gwyneth Paltrow and a colleague of hers are in person interviewing this woman expert and her colleague. And the woman expert and her colleague are very comfortable talking about these things. Like to them, it's no big deal. But you can tell that Gwen Paltrow and her co-host are kind of like, oh, oh, well, how do we, oh, yeah. And just by you showing up relaxed, you will remove that stigma. Just by being like, no, it's not a sensitive issue. It's a normal thing. Like, if a man can talk about his erectile dysfunction and we can just talk about that, like it's no big deal. And that doesn't, that erectile dysfunction doesn't nearly have the same like impact 
that vaginal dysfunction has. Like if you said that, like vaginal dis- disformation, like that's like, why is that? It's because we're yeah. not talking about it and we're not talking about it comfortably, right? So I would encourage you, even in the pageant setting, you don't have to make it harsh. Like you don't want to talk about it harshly either. <laughs> you know, it's still, it, yeah. it's, it's just talk about it like it's your left bicep, you know, or your, your right earlobe. You know, it's like we want to just start describing these things and still in, in a way that protects privacy, still in a way that like because it is a, still a an intimate and private area. You know, it's not like we're walking around without pants on. You know, it's still it's still a private area, but it is not something that we need to be, in your words, ashamed of. So I would encourage you, even in your description of it, don't be ashamed of it. Just say this is going on. Like there's more people out there that are experiencing this that are that, that maybe don't even know that it's a thing. Like, like I said that she's not really my friend, but it was like a friend of a friend of a friend that she was, didn't even know that it was a thing. And so she didn't know that she just thought she was having trouble having sex with their husband, you know, and, and didn't realize that, no, this actually has a term for it. And here's how you can get help for it. And here's what you need to know. And she didn't know that stuff. You know what I mean? So for, so anyway, my point is, is that you yourself have to first remove that stigma. And I think by watching that show, it'll help you get new words to describe it. And also that comfortability. I want you to see yourself as when you, I I'm envisioning the show even now, when you see it, you'll see the discomfort level between the expert that they're interviewing and Gwyneth Paltrow. And what I need you to do is I need you to have the comfort level that the expert brings that makes your judges and your audience and everybody else feel like, oh, this is funny. I guess we can talk about it. Like, remember, I don't know if you ever did this when you were in like junior high, when you're learning about the anatomy of the body and they make you say penis and you're like penis, penis, <laughs> penis. And all around the room, everyone has to say it. And you're like, penis. Oh, oh, I'm so embarrassed. You know, but the teacher at the front of the room is like saying the word penis like it's no big deal. If the teacher were uncomfortable, it, everybody else would be like, no, I'm not going to say it. I'm not going to say it. I'm not going to say it. Right. But because the teacher is like, this is how it is, then that that's what you need to be doing, right? You need to be the one that just shows up and says, so give it give it a name, you know? So you mentioned a few different names. You, you talked about like coming into womanhood. Like, I think you mean like getting your period, right? Yeah. So like, let's say getting your period because it removes the <laughs> stigma, right? We're, we're trying to like make it, we're giving it a pet name. Like, oh, you're hoo-ha and oh, you're, you're, Lonnie, you're <laughs> Lily. And it's like, no, like the only reason we would put those names on it is if we're covering up the shame that, that it might have. But if it's, if it's, if I don't need to be ashamed of it, then use the language that it actually is. Like th- we're not afraid to get your period because we get our periods like period. <laughs> right. See what I did there. Um, okay. So, um, so you mentioned a couple of, uh, and, and I forget the word that you used because it was a new word to me. Um, but you mentioned coming into womanhood, but then you also said uh, something like sexual organ disorder, or I don't know. How did you describe after you said like pelvic floor endometriosis, things that would come from abuse, uh, vaginesis, or the what is the umbrella term for those? Is it a sexual organ disorder, or what did you call that? Um. And it's either sexual dysfunction or it's um, dysfunction disorders. It just depends on what wording you use. But okay. basically, it's dysfunction. Okay. So um, endometriosis is more reproductive, but they're all mm-hmm. still entwined. I, it, yeah. I mean, causes can be endometriosis right. or trauma. They're yeah. both kind of in, in my – I'm, like, stuttering. I don't know why. Um so in a sense, they're both trauma in some sorts because yeah. I do have endometriosis and I've had trauma and they're basically both the same, painful, and they just ruin my day kind of thing. So yeah. I just, yeah, you know, it should be under the umbrella. Yeah, totally. So as you watch that episode and perhaps you'll even find as you're researching that, you might even find other works that will, that are of people that are doing similar work to you that have already created kind of umbrella terms that are comfortable and are like, like, for example, getting your period. That is such an odd, what does that even mean? Period? Who created that word? But we all know what that means. You know, like it's, it's something that 
we can all come together on and, and share around like, oh, are you on your period? Like we just say it, that term and it's something that we know. So, but we also say like menstrual cycle, you know, so that's another way of saying it, but you'll start to learn what, like, what are the words that you can use so that it doesn't feel, cause I even felt in that moment when I was like, how do I ask this? Like, what is it? Like, I'm like, <laughs> what is this thing? And then you said it and I'm like, oh yeah, I, I know of that. Like I, Actually, I know that's, I've heard about that before. So, and I'm like, well, now I'm interested. Now it's not like some weird thing that's over there. Now it's like, wow, I'm, I'm like actually really intrigued by this, you know? So that's what you want to do. And as you communicate and for your judges, you want to kind of use the terms with confidence and with clarity so that they don't, they don't feel confused. You know, um, anytime you create confusion, people don't want to act. They don't want to choose. So if you, it's like, if you've ever been to like a Mexican restaurant and you pull up on a menu and it's like the biggest menu you've ever seen. And it's like every combination of rice and beans and like, and like tortillas of your life. Like, and it's just, you sit there and you're like, Oh my gosh, I need more time. The waiter comes over and you're like, I'm not ready. I need more time. Like I'm so confused by this menu. I, I don't know what to choose. But if they showed up and they were like, there's three options. Do you want fish tacos? Do you want a bean burrito? Or do you want the fajitas? You'd be like, mm, fajitas. It'd be easy to choose because there's no confusion there, right? So what your job is as the leader of the interview is to create no confusion. You want to show up with confidence and clear, clear talk about it, okay? Um, all right, I love this. So my suggestion to you would be that you really hone in on the concept of lady talk because there, there, there might be a lot of events, but lady talk, that, that what you have there is golden. And especially now when people are consuming more, I mean, the rate of consumption of online content has been increasing exponentially year over year. In the last two weeks, people are watching more online content than they have there in their whole lives. Like it's unbelievable how much people are, are interested in this type of stuff. If you were to create some way of getting these conversations out. Like, let's just say you created a Facebook group or something, something like that. It doesn't even have to be Facebook. Maybe people don't, I mean, if we're fully removing the stigma and saying this stuff is okay to talk about, then creating a Facebook support group is fine. You know, cause then it's like, you yeah. don't even have to hide. Like I'm in the group, you're in the group, we're in this group together. Like stop hiding from this. It's real, you know? So if you created a Facebook group or something like that, where people could watch these types of videos and you could do them where you just have, you bring some, it doesn't have to even be a panel. It could be just people sharing their story, you know, and you ask people, Hey, is anyone willing to share their story around this? And maybe you ask the gynecologist, look, they're not seeing people, right? Well, maybe gynecologists are, but massage therapists probably aren't right. They got time on their hands. They might be willing to say, Hey, I'll share my, my, you know, or a, a natural health practitioner Right now, people are looking for the, the words of wisdom from our healthcare system. If you were to be able to create a group of people, start a Facebook group that's your the support group, you might even have that already, and start to gather yeah. these conversations with people together, I think that should be your main focus. Then when you're ready to do lady talk in person, you're already going to have a Facebook group of, who knows, 50, 100, 1,000 people, perhaps even around the world that are ready for this conversation. So now when you win your pageant mm -hmm. title, now you can fly to New York City and do a live event there because you've already been doing them online. You've got an audience in New York City, you know? And then you can fly to Orlando yeah. and do one there. And then you're gonna fly to Austin and do one there. You know, now it starts to create steam because the lady talk thing is becoming more and more popular. And it's all it is is people sharing insights, they're sharing their story, and they're connecting that support that they really need, right? Is this something you've considered about bringing it online? Um, I've tried doing a support group online and, and in person, but the online community is hard because like you said, Facebook, you can see who's in the who's group. In the so it's really hard to gain traction from that. I've tried. Um, I definitely want to try what you're saying just to do a video so people can at least watch it. Yeah. Um, and then go from there. I definitely like that idea. Yeah, especially right. people in New York City, people in Florida, California can watch it. Then. Exactly. Yes, that's <laughs> right. That's right. Yeah, like even further reaching um, than just right there. Another thing you could consider is I don't know how techy you are, um, but these days it's really easy to start a podcast. 
So that's another way of um, reaching the community without uh, creating a group that people have to be, um, you know, raise their hand for. Uh, You could just create a podcast where you're still bringing the conversations together. A really great uh, free and easy to get up on podcast resource is this uh, website called Anchor, A N. C, I'm going to spell anchor wrong. I don't know. It's spelled anchor. A and how do you spell anchor? A N C H O R anchor. Yeah. And I think that it's, it's either anchor.com or anchor.fm. I can't, I can't remember. Let me just look it up right now. So I give you the right one. Hang on. Anchor, anchor.fm, anchor.fm. And you can create with that, you can actually create, um, podcast audios And then you can upload them through an app. You can upload them right on the thing. It's so easy and it's like free software. So it'd be a really easy way to just kind of get it up and going. And like now's the time, you know, the people that capitalize on this moment and are able to kind of get these things out there will be even more vital, you know, even more helpful. Yeah. And because this work that you're doing touches everybody, you know, it's not, it doesn't, it doesn't just touch the person who's experiencing it themselves, but it also is touching the spouse it's also touching the mm-hmm. – imagine a single dad whose daughter starts to go through um, getting her period. I was going to say menopause, but I'm like, no, nope, that's not going to work. Uh, get It starts to get her <laughs> period. Um, or even the spouse yeah. who whose spouse is going through menopause. Like that's another whole other – thing that's like this unknown and and it's like an uncomfortable conversation and it's like what is going on you know or the sibling you know if there's a sibling that has you know if I have a younger sister or something and and when she first gets her period or a brother that has a younger sibling and it's like all these things that people can benefit from this even if they're not experiencing it personally um, these conversations are going to be going to be and there are so many countries out there too who are in your words, shamed, but also like, um, systemically oppressed. So there's no access to tampons or feminine hygiene products. There's no, um, financial resources perhaps for those things, or even those that do have the financial resources, they don't go to CVS and see a tampon section, you know, like that those things don't exist. So people are going to be open to hearing these conversations. And I bet As soon as you get started, if you were to launch a podcast, for example, you will have people referring other, like I can already think of somebody that I'm like, oh yeah, because I have a friend who has a nonprofit in San Diego who she actually collects donations and sends them to, I think somewhere in Africa. I don't remember the name of it. I don't remember which country it is, but somewhere she sends there to a specific organization that receives tampons and and pads and things like that for, for women who don't have access to it, you know? she'd be awesome to have on your show, you know, and be another connection for you, yeah. you know? So, yeah. So what do you think about that? How does this feel for you? Um, yeah. Yeah. I love it. Cause I've been sitting here, like I haven't been able to do anything, my job, um, now this epidemic going out, so I can't go see anyone or hold any events. So I feel like I haven't been doing much, even though I want to do more on the podcast. Can you, can I do a podcast with another person? Like if I'm interviewing someone? Yes. Yep. So the way that you could do it is if you, so like, for example, right now we are on Skype and you can record Skype, even Skype calls. So, and you can do it for free. I'm not sure if there's a limit on it right now or not, but if you did a Skype call with somebody, you could do it over video. You know, what I would recommend and the way that I do it is I do it over video and then I put it on YouTube And I use iMovie. You could use iMovie, which comes on any Mac, but a lot of softwares do this where you can get the recording, um, even if it's on video, but then you can export it as audio only. So then you get the audio and then that becomes your podcast. So what you would do is you would get on Skype. You'd say hello to the person. Oh, hi. How are you? Okay. I'm going to start recording. Here we go. You click record and then you say, hi, everybody. Welcome back to the show. To, on today's show, we have so and so. Okay, welcome to the show. And then they say, "Thanks for having me on." You launch in the thing, and then in the end, you say, "Okay, well, thanks again for being on the show. Bye for now." And then you can stop the recording, and then you can say a proper goodbye to the person if you want, or you could just say the proper goodbye and then stop the recording. You know, um, so I would do it that way, and then then you've got the audio that you can make it a podcast. You can upload it to your YouTube channel or to your Facebook group. You know, you can use it in a variety of different ways. Yeah. 
Right. Cool. Thank Does that you. sound good? And in your book, since I've been reading it, yeah. um, I stopped reading it because I've been so busy. But yeah. is there a certain section or chapter that I should focus on with this type of topic or my struggles? Yeah, good question. So let me look up the specific one. Well, the first one that I know will benefit you is episode number 23 is the one about legacy project. So in the book, and actually, let me get the book. In the, let me see here. In the chapter that's on um, platform, uh, let's see here. Create, chapter four, create a powerful platform. So chapter four starts on page okay. 77. And I believe um, the first one is probably the details of that. Hang on, let me find it. 77. Okay. So the six things that you need to know for your platform. So um, this is the very first uh, one in that chapter. So this is about the, the biggest one that you're going to need is uh, element number five, which is to focus on the light. So that's like uh, the idea about instead of like, which I think your platform title, what's the title of your platform, your nonprofit? Uh, shine with courage. Yes. I love it. Shine with courage. So instead of saying like <laughs> awareness about vaginal disorders, you're saying shine with courage, right? So if I'm going to join a group, I would rather join shine with courage than awareness of vaginal disorders, right? If I'm going to raise my hand, I'm going to raise my hand to shine with courage, right? So that, that will be helpful for you. That entire chapter I think will serve you. Um, but the, on page 85, it talks about that episode 23, which is uh, your legacy project is your winning ticket to the crown. So as you are building this out, you've already got your nonprofit, which is awesome. And by the way, Katie, that is phenomenal because so many people want to run a nonprofit, but it is a lot of work, as you know. Um, so kudos to you for even like diving into that. I think that that's totally amazing. And I think that if you were to focus just on lady talk and make that your like real legacy project for all the things moving, because I know you're already busy. Now imagine you win this pageant title. You're going to be even more epically busy. You know, you're going to be wanting to, to connect with people. People are going to be reaching out to you and asking you personal questions. You're going to have to create time for that. Like, so if you were to just focus on the lady talk events, having them online or have, or lady talk podcast where you just are, are promoting that type of thing and make that your central focus, then eventually you could be doing lady talk live all over the U S that'd be awesome. You know? So yeah. Hey. Great question. Hey. Cool. Katie. Hey. So how do you feel about all this? Is it doable? Does it feel good? I loved it. Thank you. Yay. Good, uh, good, good. And then you do more coaching, right? Like, um, I can just go to your website for the other packages. Or? Yes. Yes. So I offer, so a good course that you might consider if you're thinking about next would be the pageant interview game plan. So the game plan talks first about branding. So you discover your, your personal brand and how that's going to show up. Then it moves into legacy project. And there's a bonus training in there about specifically legacy project. So it really enhances that platform and it makes sure that it's like dialed in tightly. Then you talk about communication. So in the game plan, it's like, okay, now you've got this great thing. How do you communicate it in your paperwork, in your interview, in onstage question? So there's an element of communication and then interview. So interview, what you should expect, okay. how to control, how to lead your interview, things like that. So that's kind of like the Mac Daddy program. There are other courses if you're interested in doing online courses. And then, yes, I do more coaching like this. I do one-off coaching, 30 minutes, 60 minutes. Or if you want the VIP package, then that's like a full month where we just build all this out. I walk you through everything. We do anything that you need. So helping you set up your podcast, helping you you launch your YouTube channel, even things like that, we could, could we could do within that VIP program. It's a really customized program. Yeah. And it's all, it's, cool. you can, you can find everything at winapageant.com. That'll kind of take you to all the other, other things. All right. Awesome. Katie. Well, it's Thank been so such much. a pleasure. Thank you so much for your coachability and vulnerability on this call. I know that it's going to serve other people as they also are figuring out how to talk about their platform and how they're going to be able to communicate it on a larger scale. So 
Thank you for being the teacher for others today as well. I appreciate you. Ooh, wasn't that good stuff? Oh, I hope you learned so much from her. I know I had so much fun doing this strategy call with her as we usually do. It's fun. So two things. If you need to hear more of these strategy sessions because they're so good and you can learn so much from them, then just search strategy sessions because I have a few more clients that also agreed to be recorded. So you'll be able to look at the behind the scenes of their calls as well. Well. And then if you are ready to schedule your strategy session, you can go to winapageant.com slash coaching. That's going to take you to my calendar so you can see what appointments are available and when you can book yours. And you'll also see pricing options there, which types of calls are available and how much do each of them cost. And you can book your call directly from there. I cannot wait to work with you. Head over to winapageant.com slash coaching to check it out. I'll see you next time.